This is Lee. You can spend so much time in post-processing. In fact, you can probably spend more time processing one image than you did on your entire photo shoot. <laughs> and sometimes that's fun. Sometimes I like to sit in front of the computer and really mess around with an image in uh, photo editing software. However, more often, I would rather just get a beautiful shot in my camera without having to sit down in front of my computer with it. Now, there are lots of different effects that you can get in photo editing software. And some of them, you just need the computer. You just have to sit down and put the image through the photo editing software. However, some of them, you really don't have to. So let's talk about some of the effects that you can get with your camera and just setting up the scene so that you don't have to sit down in front of the computer. First, let's talk about high contrast. Everyone loves a high contrast look. In fact, one of the first things that I uh, am going for in my photo editing software when I put an image into it is the contrast slider. <laughs> so, there are a lot of things that you can do before you get to photo processing uh, that will amp up the contrast in your photo. So, let's talk about things that you can do with your scene first. First of all, uh, look at your subject. Is your subject light-haired or dark-haired? Because if you have someone that is light-haired, use a dark backdrop. Or if you have someone that is dark-haired, use a light backdrop. That's an easy way to get some contrast. Also, having to do with the model, have her wear a lot of makeup. Um, that'll get a good contrasty look. In addition to that, you can set up your lighting so that there is more contrast, more shadow and light. And then, I don't know, you could also even upload a custom tone curve into your camera. Now that would be able to help you uh, get a more contrasty look. Now let's talk low contrast. A lot of people are afraid to go for low contrast because they think it'll, you know, maybe the image will end up looking flat. But when done right, the image can definitely look good and even dreamy. So to get a low contrast look, you can do a few different things. With your scene, you could go with more of a medium toned backdrop, like a beige or a light or medium gray. That would kind of blend in with your subject a little more, create a little less contrast. You could also use uh, even lighting. If you have a more evenly lit scene and a more evenly lit uh, subject, you would have less contrast between the subject and the background, and your subject would be evenly lit, so there wouldn't be as much contrast in shadow and light. Next is skin smoothing, every model's favorite. Photo editing software has come a long way towards making skin smoothing the easiest thing in the world, and you can make a subject's skin look flawless just at the touch of a button. However, you can go a long way towards making a subject's skin look great without ever having to put the image through a computer. One of the things that you can do, or rather the model or the subject can do, is to wear foundation primer. It is something that goes on the skin before the foundation does, and it really helps the skin to stand up to the studio lights. Another thing that they can do is to use body makeup. This is something that is widely used in the fashion industry. It's just makeup that goes on your body, so it covers up any flaws. Another thing that you as a photographer can do is set up your lighting so that the light is soft. One of the best ways to do that is just to use a soft box. The next effect we'll talk about is a blurry background or a minimized background. A lot of times you will use your photo editing software to blur out or to darken the background so that the viewer's attention goes straight to the subject. There are a couple of different methods that you can use to blur out or darken the background. The first would be to use a narrow depth of field. You do that by simply widening your aperture. That way, your subject is in crisp focus, but then everything else is kind of blurred out. It makes your subject stand out. The other thing you can do is to darken your background. To do that, you would want to use a narrow aperture on your camera so that you're not bringing in as much light, but you would want to light your model well, but don't light your background. That way, when you take the photo, your model will be lit up, but your background will be pretty dark. So that way, your model stands out, but everything else just kind of fades into the blackness. Lighting, lighting, lighting. You'll notice that in each of these effects, I talked about lighting. That's because lighting is one of the most important tools in a photographer's arsenal. 
you can have the most expensive camera. You can spend a ton of time in post-processing like in Photoshop. But if you didn't get the lighting right in your initial shot, your photo probably isn't going to be the best. Now, like I said in the beginning, sometimes it's fun to spend a lot of time in Photoshop, but you definitely don't have to to obtain Photoshop-like results.